Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight we have special guests Pochop and the Tony Soto Show. And please help me welcome your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito! What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. I am your host, Tito Bonito, and I am not waiting. I'm not wearing anything from the waist down. Thank you, Jeez Louise, number one burlesque performer in the world, pausing Babysitter's Club for the Tito Bonito Show. You could have watched this later, but you wanted to watch it live. You wanted to see what was going to happen in this show. And let me tell you, it's not going to be a joke today. Look, I'm a professional. Lighting! Uh, welcome, welcome. It has been a little bit of a break since the last Tito Bonito show because, as we all know, the world and this country has been um, acknowledging a few things recently. And I wanted to make sure that we took a break to acknowledge and work hard to make sure that we advocate for Black Lives Matter, for trans lives, and for uh, all of the lives, especially indigenous people who have not basically been screwed over by this fucking country. So, uh... I wanted to take a break, honor it, and I think, too, this has probably been getting a little bit to all of us right now, just the fact that we are in this quarantine. So, you know, I think a little bit of a break is good for everyone. You know, you center yourself, take a rest, and get back into action. Let's get back into creating art, creating the the kind of things that, you know, you want to see. So I am very excited to have back this show but especially because tonight i have two very special guests that's four two very special guests that i have been friends with since my college years since my i always refer to it as my formative years uh back in chicago as a student of columbia college chicago dropouts and so i'm very excited to have them on the show today catching you back up with everything that's been going on in my life uh, as you know, I took a little bit of a break. You haven't seen the Tito Bonito show, but there is a lot going on. If you want to follow me on my OnlyFans, it's only $5 a month. You can see a lot of things, including a very special duet that I just uh, created this week with the Puerto Rican Tito, Tito Soto. Not to be confused with our, one of our very special guests this evening, Tony Soto. Tito and I have been trying to come up with a duet for the longest time. And after Lady Gaga... And Ariana Grande finally created a wondrous, magical duet together. We uh, f- came together and we created a great... As you can see, I am now Tito Soto, and Tito Soto is now Tito Bonita. Look at this. Why am I dancing so like, like thriller and shit? Uh, that was a very, very fun project that I was able to do with Tito. It was a part of Gagathon that aired yesterday on Twitch. If you want to watch the whole thing, you can go over to his Instagram and watch it. You can watch it on my OnlyFans as well, plus a special couple little extras on my OnlyFans for that. Uh, but we were very excited to not only do it for Gagathon, but to raise so much money for great causes like Black Trans Femme Arts Collective, Redline, Precinct, and the Stud Bar in San Francisco. Those are all our home bars and very, very special. That's where we create our art. And also to be able to forward that, we made over $4,300. Yes! Uh, Jeez Louise in the comments says, the hair shaking is my favorite part. You know, not gonna lie, that's my favorite part too. And when I'm all of a sudden dressed like Jesus, <sighs> we are silly, silly, silly. It felt amazing to create with Tito because I also created a duet recently with Bazooka Joe where we were Batman and Robin and it felt like creating back in Chicago when I used to work with Jeezy and we would create so much fun stuff. I even have my first duet ever was with Pochop who's in the show tonight. So we might talk about that. Uh, but it feels good. It feels good to be alive, to be creating 
even under whatever circumstances we are in right now. But um, that was very, very, very fun. And it was awesome to be able to create such a wondrous thing for such a great cause. Uh, also, I'm going to be posting a lot more on my OnlyFans. So get the link in my bio and go check that shit out. No, you're not going to see porn. But I promise you it'll be worth the five dollars. It's five fucking dollars. Uh, upcoming guests this month, though. Hello, we have some very special guests coming up this month, and I can only name a few, but I am very excited that I can say who's going to be here. We have Redbone all the way from Minneapolis and San Francisco by Coastal, Burlesque Star. We also have Monica May, former Power Ranger turned Burlesque Superstar, uh, and one of my Biggest Crushes, Jojo Guads, is also going to be on the show. So stay tuned. We also have a lot more that I'm not able to tell you right now because I don't have the actual dates yet. So stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to interview Pochop, Tony Soto, and then play some games with them. And I might be introducing a brand new game to the show today, y'all. And if you haven't seen some of the past episodes, I strongly encourage you to go to IGTV and go check some out. Our last episode was with the number one burlesque performer in the world, Jeez Louise. And it was amazing. Let me tell you that fuck, Mary kill game. <sighs> this shit needs to be on the TV. Like, I'm tired. I don't think there needs to be four late night shows with all of the hosts being named Jimmy. Like, can we get... And don't try to James me. Don't try to side eye me and try to act like that's a different name. We need a Tito hosting some shit right now. So uh, if anybody's watching and they have the powers to be, you know what's up uh also also shout out we have uh birthdays this week i do want to shout out one of my favorite performers out here in los angeles ruby champagne who will be finally turning 21 this sunday uh so please go show her some love she is amazing the mexican spitfire of burlesque Whew, that is a lot of me talking so also i want to let you know since we can't hear you there's not going to be a sh crazy show today but if you like what you see, you can always comment in the comments. Uh, if you have questions for any of the performers, including myself, there is a little question mark box right here. You can submit your questions. I'm not saying that I'm going to answer them or even read them, but it's worth the shot, you know? So go there, put some fan mail, and we'll see. But I am very ready to get this show started. How about y'all? This is where you also, if you want to make some noise, you can put some hearts so that I can hear that you're actually paying attention and loving it. And that'll be like your applause. OK, so the more hearts you hit, the more I think Instagram likes it. I don't fucking know. But I am very excited to bring on our very first guest. I have known this performer for over a decade. She was one of my first burlesque inspirations and performance artist inspirations. I love so fucking much. I'm bringing them on right now. You know this person as one of the most amazing, thoughtful people in the world. Very rarely do you see this person joining the internet to do a show, but they are here for me. Poe Chop in the motherfucking building. Give it up, everybody, for Poe Chop. Look at you looking beautiful. The okay. gent. <laughs> yes, uh, Arsenio. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wow. Pochop, Pochop, one of the top burlesque performers in the motherfucking world right now. Listen, that's just facts. I'm going based off of 21st century burlesque, in my opinion. That's real. Voted by the community. You know, voted by, you can't, you can't knock the community. The community says what? That you are number 39. Mm, mm, mm. Who would have thought? Who I would have thought. thought about those exit days. Lit. Listen, if y'all don't know about Exit in Chicago, let me tell you that when we, when I started Burlesque, Pochop was one of the first performers I ever saw. Uh, I believe my first act I ever saw you do was Tyrone. Oh, Tyrone. Still one of my favorite acts, but Exit was, I remember thinking, this is the bottom. It can only go up from here. It liter literally, that chain leak fence. I feel no, like I no. so much from watching Jeezy climb that fence. And I mean, she did a lot of other things to that fence too, but yeah. But oh yeah, no, I tried to climb that fence once too when we did our do, uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell routine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Pochop did a uh, duet to Rhythm Nation and If. Mm. And let me tell you that that was the first time that an audience, and there's video, I have it. It's on the YouTube. There is 
an audience member that grabs his face like this after we're done performing like what the fuck that was one of, still one of my favorite compliments ever how are you doing today pocha i'm all right i'm doing good you know i'm just i got dressed to sit in my living room to be on instagram and that's probably the most work i've done today L so. listen that's probably the most anybody's done today right so. That was the most I did today. Listen, I bought Starbucks on Uber Eats. Brought that shit came over. I don't even like Starbucks. And the driver spilled the coffee in the car. So I said, you can have that. Wow. Like, I was like, I'm not going to do anything today. Can't even have coffee. Oh. But I got dressed up because I remembered that I was hosting this show with the two of you today. And both of you have dealt with me for a very long time. You have, you have seen me go through drag. Huh. You have seen me go through ups, downs, sideways, middle ways. Uh, you've seen me try to move to LA with $20. Try? Uh, you did. Wait, say that again for the people in the back. You did. You're there. You're still there now, right? Eight years. Eight years. Can you believe it's been eight years? No. I'm, listen. I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about you. I'm talking here to talk about all of the projects that you do because not only are you one of my favorite burlesque performers of all time, 110%, but you are also an amazing, and I will toot toot your ass this whole fucking show. I will give all the accolades. You are an amazing performance artist that spans from every kind of thing. I think the only thing you don't do is sing. Literally, I wish, like, singing is a thing, like, when people can sing, I cry, because I wish I could sing so bad, Tito, like, ooh, to be able to sing, to be able to, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could just carry a little bit of a note, just a touch of a note, I can't. I'm I, listen, I will say that I do believe that every single person can sing. Listen, I'm not talking about... Ariana Grande, Mariah Carey, Messiah Carey kind of singing. Because I like to sing like I'm Whitney, but I should be singing like I'm Mark Anthony, you know? <laughs> Listen. That's so I've learned, I've learned that about myself, but I will say that I want to put out an album. I'm putting it out there into the universe. We can have a track together, girl. Maybe I can rap. Jeez, Jeez Louise could write some raps. I'll rap. Listen, uh -huh. but, but, but I digress. Look how I still made it about me. Not only are you an amazing performance artist, you are the author of The Brown Pages. And I want to talk about all of uh, the projects that you have going on, but I want to talk about each one individually first because they are so very important. And especially a lot of people seem to be finding you now instead of realizing that you've been the shit. So do you want to tell the audience a little bit more about The Brown Pages? Yeah, so The Brown Pages are... Um my kind of like blog zine i created them i think three years ago um mainly as a way like i'm not really active on social media this is legitimately the first time i've ever gone live on instagram i we know. feel really uncomfortable sharing my work on, on on social media so i wanted to create um some sort of platform space to like really show my work and what i do especially behind the scenes um stuff in a way that was authentic and a way that like was in line with how I create my work like I wanted to be special I wanted it to be a, a, another world I guess and yeah so like I there's I'm now in the third volume so there's 21 editions total um and there I mean there's like behind the scene videos there's a lot of writing and reflections photos yeah, collage work. There's like historical timelines. It's a wide range. There's memes. It's a wide range of like stuff. Um, and people and people can access it. Hello, pussy. Uh, people can access it on it's it's pochop dot com, mm -hmm. which is such a articulate website. Let me tell you. Thank you. It's just stunning. It's visually stunning. It's informative without being too much like my ass. I'll be writing some paragraphs on my website about shit uh, that I don't need to be writing about. Um, on top of Brown Pages, you've been doing that, you said three years? Yeah, three years. You also have the Black Burlesque Directory. Mm -hmm. And that basically shows everyone, all of the Black performers that are in the burlesque scene. And not only is that in this country, but you have directories for all the continents. Right, yeah. It's worldwide, yeah. 
So if anyone is out there being like, I love burlesque, I don't know burlesque, I love this girl's vibe, let me find out more about this. It's Pochop has so many amazing references and uh, things that you can find way more information, not only about Pochop, but about the entire Black burlesque community, which is phenomenal. Like, it's so, I don't think we need a Cuban directory, but it's 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 amazing to me to see directories that are not only up to date, but are out there to support people because this is such a hard, it's not like we have agents or anything like that where that we can just give people resources in order to find things. We have to create them ourselves. So without people like you, we'd really just be running around with a ch like our heads cut off. I mean, I feel like one of the very first things I learned about burlesque was that it was DIY. There was nobody gonna do nothing for me. And like, if I was going to feel some sort of way or have these expectations, I guess, from producers and curators on what a show should look like, I think it's important for me to provide that tool. Um, that way I can be like, no, really, you can't say nothing because there's a list that has existed and it still is updated, like you said, uh, to refer to, you know? So I think it's important that we, we, we speak loud, but we also provide solutions when we're able to. Absolutely. And I do, uh, a lot of my favorite writers, directors, actors, performers, they all kind of say the same thing, which is even in a field like entertainment, ooh, ooh, what happened? That was my yeah. laptop. Let me just pick it up. Get, get it. Get your life. I know. My cat. She was, that cat was like, no. Um, she had her booty up in the air. She was loving the pets. You know how Oh pets my God, are. I love that. I don't wish I had a little kitty here. Uh, I was saying that at least, like, I do love the fact that so many people that are successful in even huge industries like film, they usually say that to be the most successful, you do have to create your own shit. You have to write your own shit, star in it, do all of that. So I do love the fact that burlesque is DIY in it. There's so much different things that it's, it's such an amazing umbrella. You don't have to just dance. You don't have to strip. I've seen burlesque without stripping in it. Right. So it's really magical to be able to have that understanding so that whenever setbacks happen, which they will, it doesn't completely derail you from like moving forward and progressing. Yeah, it can. I mean, it's, it is easy. It's easy for me sometimes to allow it to set me back. But then I think, I think, yeah, realizing, like you said, that, like, yeah, they ain't, ain't, mm -mm. You, if, if I want to create the kind of work that I create, I know that I have to create those own spaces or uplift those spaces, like Jesus Juice Joint, that um, have nurtured my own career. And, and while doing that, reaching back to ensure that people can come with me. Like, it's not just me. It ain't just about me. You know. Yeah, how are we supposed to blow up by ourselves? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, we have to blow up together. Yeah, we're a community. Not I only are you been a cast member of Jeezy's Juke Joint since the very first one, yeah. which we all know Jeezy Louise, she is the jam, uh, started off as a blog and now is a decade long running show that is in so many different cities. But not only are you a cast member, you're a board member. What's your favorite? thing about working with Jeezy and Jeezy's Juke Joint? I mean, part of it is just working with Jeezy. I mean, Jeezy is like, is just a magical person, a very considerate, very thoughtful with how she puts together the show. Like, having conversations where I'm able to kind of like hear how she makes decisions is really cool and educational for me. I think also just like, the show themselves, like being backstage with like some, like people who like, I, I remember watching their videos online. Like it, it, it's hard for me not to get kind of like starstruck because I, I'm sharing like space with people like mentors almost like people that I, I've looked up to on so many ways, but like they're chill. They're like me, they down to earth. And like, there's a, it feels like a kinship. It feels like a, a family reunion. Like, it feels like family. And I think that in itself is, spe is special to me because I think a, a lot of times as, a, as an, a Black artist, it can feel isolating um, or alone once we're in navigating this in these institutions. But being able to work with a Black institution and like help grow it is, I mean, really, that's it's my life's work. And it's truly a blessing that 
I am connected to my life's work that I'm not looking for, but I have it. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, don't let me get emotional. <laughs> Ooh, oh my God. And you know, I will say that one of my favorite things that I've been able to see since I've been away from y'all is that episode of Easy where it was not only you all being yourselves, but being able to promote yourselves as yourself. Like that was just, that is like the perfect dream to me. It, I've watched that episode. I haven't even seen the whole season. And I've watched that episode so many times because it just, it establishes this like, like hope and faith that I know we all have as artists where we're like, we want to be seen, but to be seen and as exactly as you are and how you want to be is so magical. And I do feel like the only way to do that properly is to be yourself authentic self and to do it your own way yeah i totally agree i just watched this um you just made me think i just watched this betty davis um documentary on amazon mm -hmm. and like oh fuck amazon but betty davis she like her story even down to like how she is now she like secluded herself but it was by choice and it was because she was met constantly with people trying to pressure her to change to fit into a mode so that she could be more commercial and like, yeah, it is a gift. It's a gift to be able to, um, in some senses, be artistically free. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I did get a question from one of the uh, audience that they wanted to know what's on your mug. Oh, I just got this mug today. It, it says, pay black women for their labor instead of using them for diversity clout. Boop. Oh, you can't. Where'd you get that from? I got it from um, a black artist. I believe it's, I believe the the page was Brownie Points. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll look yeah. it up. We'll put. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Oh my God, I love that. Also, uh, this is the one thing I feel like I didn't know about you. You're a di you're a dancer in residence for this year for Nike. No, not for Nike. So I was featured on the Nike app for what? residency that I have in um, in Chicago at Rebuild Foundation. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, how how is that? How did that happen? It's dope. It just happened through. Um, so two years ago, I was awarded as a Chicago Dance Makers uh, Forum Lab artist. They funded the creation of a work, and through my relationship with them, I kind of got connected with Rebuild, and they I would just agreed to support my work through uh, providing space. And I'm also they they house. Um, uh, archives, archives, the uh, Johnson and Johnson Publishing Company. Their mm -hmm. archives, like all the Jet, all the Ebony, Tan, um, all of that stuff is is accessible. So I've been. It's really dope that I get to go in there, and it's interesting because through Ch Chicago Honey Child, I learned that a lot of burlesque, black burlesque, um, our archives are in Jet. So like, it's cool that I've been able to sit down and like hold these like ancient magazines and like touch and read about black burlesque and like sideshow performers that's yeah. fucking amazing holy shit yeah it's dope that, that's why it's so important the work you're doing because it's like in order for you to be able to like hold those things even though it's online it's still tangible and still you can still hold it that's what you're gonna offer to performers come 20 years from now Right. In the, in the after times. Jeezy says the before times. In the after times. Yes. Long, long when we're gone, people are going to be looking at your directories and your work and they're going to be inspired by it. And I, and I say that now in a sense of like, it feels maybe a little bit weird to hear stuff like that, but it's true. Like, it's actually going to be like the groundwork that you're putting right now is so important. I'm so appreciative of who you are and everything that you love doing because that shit is so amazing. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I don't, it's funny because I, I think I spent a lot of time talking to, meditating, trying to connect with the ancestors. And I don't think of myself, my future self being an ancestor. And that's beautiful. It's a good thing to, to think about too. Like you're saying, it's like, yeah, the work that I'm doing hopefully will be a light for the next generation of artists and Black folks. Okay. I can't imagine that it wouldn't be. Uh, before we go, though, before we play our little game, I do want to touch up a little bit, couple of notes. You're not only an amazing performer, performance artist, you also teach various classes. You've been teaching for over a decade. Uh, we used to teach at the same studio. Uh, but 
coming up in August, you have a series of films coming out called Litany. Did I, am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Litany, yeah. So Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so in conjunction with, uh, as an as a art, um, a artist in residence at Rebuild, I've, collect, I've filmed uh, five, uh, a five-part series of films called Litany, and they will be released one at a time for the rest of the year, essentially. For the rest of 2020, I'll be releasing a series of short films, yeah, called Litany. It's, it's funny, this is like the first time that I'm saying it to another person besides my partner. Yeah, so it's happening. A trailer will be coming, but it's um, kind of like, it feels like an artist manifesto. It is, um, it features a, a lot of different work that has been live in the past that kind of converted into film. Um, shot with a very close friend of mine uh, during the quarantine, uh, Jordan Phelps of BAM. We love Jordan Phelps here. We love BAM. We love Jordan Phelps here. Jordan is like, killed it when i tell you that jordan showed all the way up i mean we had been talking about this film for probably two years now um and everything just kind of came together at the last minute to film it but he he's he it felt good i it felt good to collaborate with him especially he's getting ready to move you know with you but uh he's okay. coming here I, I yeah yeah they're moving to la i think next month yeah Listen, that's bold. I love anybody moving during quarantine. You're right. bold. I respect you. Uh, that's amazing, I first of it. all. Yeah. So what's it going to take to get you to move here? Oh, move? <laughs> Visit. You said. Visit. I, you know, I barely like to leave the house. Right? No, I know. I know. I have to. I, I do believe in speaking things into existence and you never know unless you say it. So even if the answer is not what you want, that is what the universe is providing you. And I'm never going to be upset about that. That's true. And you know me, I'm never going to be upset about somebody being happy, going after theirs. Uh, as long as they're doing their shit and not hurting nobody, you know, I'm always going to have your back. I know. That. I appreciate it. I always have your back. I know you do. I know you do because literally you're on here and you don't do this shit for nobody. Exactly. Speaking of, I'm going to turn the comments back on, even though people in uh, the, when they watch this later, when it's not live, they're never going to see the comments. Cheesy wow. did say that she will ghostwrite our album. We're going to get that Titty Tape rap remix featuring Po Chop. Yes. Titty Tape. Titty Tape. Titty Tape. I'm so... Uh. We, I want a music video for everything. I want a, I want a Beyonce film album. Yes. Jeezy says she wishes only she could comment. From your lips to God's ears, my <laughs> <laughs> from your lips to God's ears. Before we play our Always. game, though, there is one more uh, reference I do want you to uh, talk about if you want to. It's the People's Church of Ghetto. Do yeah. you want to? And that's a ghetto is an acronym. So do you want to tell people what the acronym is for? And then uh, a little bit more about that? Yeah. So the People's Church of the Ghetto. Ghetto stands for uh, greatest history ever told to our people. Uh, is a, a pop-up church. Uh, that is centered on the life and work of Audre Lorde and um, uses her work to illuminate the legacies of Black women um, whose lives and work enriched where I live, Bronzeville, um, a historical neighborhood in Chicago. So uh, last September, we held um, a series of services over the course of the weekend that um, uplifted three women. Uh, their names were Beauty Turner, she was a public housing activist here in Chicago. Um, she actually is a person who um, came up with the acronym for the church. She had a, a bus tour that that's where uh, she, that it was called the Ghetto Bus Tours. And she um, originated that uh, acronym. Uh, Jackie Orms, who was a, a black cartoonist who did these dope, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pinup um, paper dolls uh, called Torchy Togs. Um, and the last one was uh, um, uh, the first, one of the first female um, ministers in Chicago. Her name was Elder Lucy Smith. She was a faith healer. She was one of the very first, pe first churches to broadcast their services over the radio. Yeah, I mean, all three of them were amazing, amazing, amazing women who like legitimately touched and changed the very earth that I walk on every day. So it was a beautiful service. There was also an art installation, me and a, and a, a team of, of beautiful, generous, 
gener generous people hung about 6,000 open brown paper bags up on a wall to kind of make like an altar, kind of like a welling wall, a whole bunch of other, yeah, things that p folks were invited to. I could talk about this for hours because this literally was like, change it changed my whole life as well. Like it was such a beautiful manifestation of like years of research that I spent. But um, there was an art installation. Uh, we had relatives of Beauty Turner. Um, wow. Her son and her, uh, her sister came and spoke and shared. It was like a really touching, moving, transformative weekend. It was dope. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I cannot wait until things get back together because now I got a credit card. I'm going to fly to Chicago. Hey, That's swipe, right. swipe, swipe. Did, did, swipe, swipe. Did. Let me get that Southwest Rewards program. Yes. Let me get that first class. Right. Uh, I love you. Thank you so much for talking to us and sharing all of the projects that you're working on. Your smile is infectious. It makes me so fucking happy. Uh, so you want to play a game? Let's do it. All right. This is a brand new game that I have not played with anyone else. It's called Never. <laughs> I said it like people don't know this game. Never <laughs> have I ever. All right, and I'm gonna look at you for this one. All right, I'm gonna get close to you for this one. So for this one, do you? I already kind of pre-warned you. Do you have a drink or a, a joint I'm or something? Be real classy. I have this college bong. Yes. First of all, I wait from college. Like you had it from college? No, I just feel like a bong is like college. Just I was gonna life. say if you've been able to keep that since I've never kept anything that's glass. That shit breaks constantly. I literally all right, I'm gonna do a vape bong. pen. I'm gonna oh. do a vape pen because you know life, uh, and hopefully I'll get stoned enough for our next guest. Uh, so we know how to play this game. Never have I ever. I'm gonna ask you a question. If you have never done it, then you don't do anything. But oh. if you have done it, then you're gonna take a big toke. All right. All right. Not too many questions. All right. So never have I ever performed for less than three people. <laughs> I might have. I definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm going to say I have, yeah. Yeah, you have? I definitely have. I've definitely <laughs> performed for only the performers in the show and the producer wasn't even there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Never have I ever canceled a gig the day of the show. I've never done that. Oh, I have, yeah. Wait, so I, so you have to hit it. Yeah. So you, so hit it. Oh, so you hit it because you have done it. So that's oh, a punishment. I was supposed to hit it last time too. Right? Y'all, I'm going to turn these comments on because I don't know how to play fucking <laughs> Never Have <laughs> Why don't I know how to play Never Have I Ever? If you've never done it. Never have I ever. Then you don't do anything. But if you have done it, then you take the hit. Oh, yeah. So I should have hit it on the first one. Oh, I'm going to take one more for that first one. I've definitely performed for less than three people. Ooh. All right. Yeah. This one Ooh. technically is for both of us. Look, Jeezy's like, wow. <laughs> That's going to be my soundbite when I have a production company. Is Jeezy just going to go, wow. Uh, never have I ever popped a pasty on stage. Uh, yeah, I have. We're going to be fucked up for this. Yeah. I should have asked different questions. <laughs> Woo! Woof! Never Woo. have I ever performed an online show. Oh, I haven't. Mm -mm. Oh my god, I'm gonna be so stoned. <sighs> okay, three more. Never have I ever drank someone's drink in the audience. You've done that. Yeah, that used to be like my thing. I know, I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Could you imagine <laughs> trying to do that now? I wouldn't do it now, and I wouldn't do it back then. I definitely wouldn't do it now, but I'm And yeah. I love that COVID kind of has my three favorite words, don't touch me. <laughs> when I go back to shows, I'm going to go, don't touch me. Jeezy's playing this at home. Yes, all of y'all can play this at home, too. Y'all can get stoned and drunk as fuck as you want. Uh, <laughs> all right. Never have I ever thought that my performance was 100% perfect. Wait, yeah, I've never thought that. I've uh -oh. never, never thought that. Uh, 
And last but not least, this is the last one. Never have I ever said goodbye to people before I left the party. <laughs> That's shady. <laughs> I gotta say bye to everybody. I gotta be like bye, G. I gotta say it again. No, I'm not. Saying, <laughs> I, I'm leaving, Jesus. right? I'm, I'm, oh, you you're not even this. <laughs> you're like I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> I don't even say that. I just get up and walk out the door. That's honestly, it's not even shady. That is one of my favorite characteristics because as a Hispanic, as a minority, I feel like it takes me longer than the time that I was at the party to say goodbye to everybody. Right. And I hate it. It's just part of me. And I feel guilty if I don't do it. I love that you just go, it's time. It's time. Yeah. And you just like leave when you need to go. You leave before you need to go. It's true. Oh, look, Jeezy goes, she don't even stay for the curtain call. <laughs> I sure don't. I sure don't. What for? <laughs> for the photo. For the, no. for the cover photo on Facebook. That is exactly when I leave, when it's time for the true <laughs> photo. I do I promise. Up in the back, it's always like from here up. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I do promise that I'm never gonna take a curtain call photo naked again. Like in just my thong. Like I'm for real gonna get dressed. I'm gonna be like, you can wait. I'll announce people backstage. I'm gonna put all my clothes. Don't touch me. <laughs> Don't. Uh, po Chop, you are one of my favorite people in the world. I love you so much. Thank you so much for coming out to be a part of this show. I hope that you'll come back. Please, yes. whenever you want. Oh, whenever, I'll be back anytime. Whenever you want to promote something, when we get that first single and we need a live guest to do some music. Hi. If I... All right. I mean, that, that was, was half a note. <clears throat> that was half a note. Uh, <laughs> anything you want to say to the people before you go, you can make sure to follow Pochop on Instagram, on Twitter. It's pochop.com. Anything else you want to tell everybody before you go? No, I don't think so. I love you so much. Thank you for thinking of me and having me here and promoting my work. I love you. I miss you. Anytime. I love you. I miss you. Call me anytime you want. FaceTime me. Hit me up. Let me know about your life. Still, you got that. I love you. Show love some love. Go chop, everyone. Bye, baby. Bye. Oh, give it up for the amazing, incredible... Pochop, how y'all doing in the chats? How y'all doing in here? You doing all right? Oh, shit. It's already 740. I'm going to have to bring on my next guest. I was going to do a little real quick. Which Cuban food am I? Croquetas, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Croquetas. <laughs> Listen, uh, that was fucking <laughs> That was fucking cute. I love that. Uh, I do want to say really quick that we are uh, sponsored in part by uh, Ever After Creations. It is a shopping and retail source. If you want to make sure you get some customized products, they got masks, shirts. I got my Juilliard dropout sweater that I'm about to show y'all a picture of this week. Uh, it's an amazing store. Get your motherfucking shit here. They ship everywhere. And if you're in Miami, they deliver. You can also check out Aim to Wash Bidets. Do you really need toilet paper? I don't think you do. Come check out the sexiest bidet Aim to wash. Y'all want to make sure and check that shit out. Oof. Okay, now that we paid for the advertisers, y'all, I am so excited to bring on. I have no idea how this is going to go, y'all. But you all know this icon, this Silver Lake icon, drag host Phenom as Tony motherfucking Soto. Show some love, everybody, to Tony Soto. Oh, well, hello, 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 Chicha Bonito. Hi, love of my life. Hey, how impressive is Pocha? Like, how impressive is that human being? Seriously. I, want, I, and I still had stuff I wanted to say, and I was like, we got to... Chicago is like, listen, a lot of great things came out of Chicago. A lot of good things came out of Chicago. Tony Soto, I am so honored to not only be able to say that, yes, I agree with that because I came out of Chicago as well, but I love you so much. How are you doing, baby? I'm living. You know, it's very, very difficult to be a legendary icon uh, on a regular yeah. basis uh, during a pandemic. But, you know, here she is, upright. Behind <laughs> it's my life now. 
Tony Soto is an amazing host. He has several podcasts, including the Tony Soto Show and the Gay Power Half Hour with KC Lai. You can check those weekly. Uh, on top of that, you also have, in the before times, multiple productions, uh, including Battle Babies, Red to Filth, but some of my favorite shows and some of your favorite shows include the iconic Learn the Words Bitch Lip Sync Edition. And, uh, wait, what was the other show? <laughs> what was the other show you did? Uh, you, oh, you also have poetry. You also have a poetry reading. Queer Slam. Thank you, Queer Slam. Uh, but Learn the Words Bitch is such a, it's not that, it's like such an iconic idea is so beautifully crafted and executed. It has been running now for the past five years here in Los Angeles, every first Monday at Akbar. Yes. And now it's online. Yes. Now we what, do it on Zoom. What do you <laughs> feel on the same first Monday of every month? What do you feel like is the biggest difference? Not difference, but what do you think is the biggest, I guess, benefits and disadvantages of putting the show online instead of having it? Well, first, I want to thank you for acting like the idea is so revolutionary. We're it's really, not revolutionary, but really, it's, it's the most it's the most simple concept uh, uh, known to man. It's just opening it up to anybody to want to do it because it's just funny because, you know, it's not we've been lip syncing well before we were drag queens. You know what I mean? So like when you're in your apartment or your bathroom, you know, you're in that mirror, you're living. So this is just an opportunity to let let the the every day bring it onto the stage but you know in the in the five years we've created icons which is just what i do i i think like the the most impressive thing to me about learn the words uh being able to like move to zoom so flawlessly uh flawlessly we had a couple of snacks here and there is that it just can you know there's not a lot of things believe it or not that when we w fell into this pandemic that was able to uh, transfer over. Like, let's say, like, stand-up. Like, stand-up is suffering. Like, you know what I mean? But luckily, drag isn't. And lip-syncing is very, very easy to do. So I think the thing that I'm most impressed with is seeing how much more creative people can be because they're in their homes. Very true. And, and that's the thing. There are, of course, tons of lip sync competitions. There's lip sync battle on TV, but the way that the show is run, the way that it's accepting of everyone, the fact that it's from day, Tony Soto, you know I was there from the first show and the first show had the same energy love that it has now. Has, I don't even think it's ever had a dead time except maybe like a January. Yeah, you know, I've gotten, I've got, I've, I've been very, very fortunate. Uh, you know, I was doing drag in Chicago, and no one was taking me seriously there. And then, you know, I moved to LA, and I start learning the words, and then, you know, all of a sudden, people were paying attention. It's, I'm, I'm very lucky to have fallen into Akbar. Like Akbar is such a staple, legendary gay bar in Silver Lake, uh, um, you know, here in Los Angeles. So. Um, it already has a history, a rich history of 20 plus years. So <clears throat> the fact that I was able to go into that and just kind of like be embraced by their, their community and then create something uh, with more people to, 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 to add to the legacy um, has been pretty amazing for me. I mean, I'm on the uh, iconic icon wall at Akron. You know, like I'm, I'm right down the way from Miss Piggy, so I have good real estate. Not Miss Piggy. Oh, I mean, wait a minute. In the before times, were we still giving out ice cream? Because that's my favorite part about learning the words. You bitch. know, learn the words, bitch. And if you don't know what it is, it's a lip syncing competition that anybody can do, basically. But like, in, 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 in I think at McDonald's, because there's a McDonald's that's right next to. Uh, Akbar. To, uh, Akbar and my my co-producer Adam Silver uh, in the beginning he would run over there after we would have a top three and he would run and get three ice cream cones but either the show started running too late or they started closing ice cream too early and then that just kind of fizzled out so that's not even a thing anymore unfortunately 
and the thing is, well, I do want to say for anybody that randomly doesn't know about the show, the way that the show goes, anyone can perform in the beginning, first set, and then from there, there's two judges that will pick a top three. Those top three then have to do a roulette. So they don't know what song is going to happen. They just have to know that if you are gay on a Monday night, you should know this fucking song. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah I the, want the, the, way that the verbiage was, uh, you, sh I, uh, you have to do a song that I feel that you should know the words to if you're at a gay bar on a Monday night. But now we're not in gay bars anymore. So now it's just, if you have internet, know how to click a Zoom link. <laughs> But it's amazing because it is like you could have an amazing performance and just bomb. Like I've won one and then I've lost several. Oh, have you won? Yeah, I won the first one I ever did. Look at you. Congratulations. See, it's so funny because I, I rarely remember anyone who, you know, we just celebrated our five year anniversary on July 6th. So and we had our guest judges were the fabulous Naomi Smalls and Kim Chi. So I mean, it was it was an iconic night to begin with. But like, you know, it's, it's funny because, of course, when we're in a live situation in a bar, sometimes you get those people who are like, they just sign up, they don't really know what they're getting into, or they're like super nervous and they over drink to, to, to overcompensate for like, and, it, and, it, and it, come, it might be a little messy, you know? Um, but with it being on Zoom now, uh, I feel like there's this desire from each performer to fucking just really go at it and show you something amazing. And I don't deserve that, but they do it for the show and bless their hearts, you know? They do it for the show, you and I'm sure a piece of themselves. You also have a special edition of it this Saturday? Uh, or coming up next week? On the 16th, is that right? I think it's the 18th. Oh, shit. I should it's really... the Next Saturday is the 18th. Okay, the 18th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh... So when learn the words, bitches, typically at, at, when we do it in Akbar, when time, what you call it before times, um, uh, we would throw a regular learn the words, bitch, but then we would also do a Saturday night dance party where we would bring uh, a fun DJ and then like every 30 minutes, one of like learn the words, bitch alumni, because there's a lot of people who are like kind of famous for doing the show will come back and do a number um, periodically on the dance floor as the night progresses. So because we can't do that, um, I had asked some of our most favorite performers of the five years to pre-record numbers that uh, we're gonna, and so we're gonna do a show on my Twitch, on the Tony Soto Show Twitch uh, on the 18th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is, of course, if I learn Twitch between now and then. We'll just move it to Zoom. Uh, speaking of you, though, you also have a podcast that's been running since you were in Chicago called The Tony Soto Show. Yeah, I, I really like my name a lot. I like the way it sounds together. Listen, uh, I'm just loving the fact that there's Tony Soto, Tito Soto, Tito Bonito. It's going to well, be... I heard you earlier. It got confusing. I was like, there's a lot of T's and S's, Queen. <laughs> a lot of queens just going to. Um, I'm practicing. Yeah. The Tony Sutter show is going to be six years old in November. Uh, Congratulations. And, you know, it's funny. Um, it all started because I worked at the Lucky Horseshoe Lounge in uh, Chicago, Illinois as a bartender. And, you know, I've always had like a high opinion of myself. And at one point, my boss there told me, you know, it's not the Tony Soto show. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I'll make sure there is one. And, and that's kind of how it happened. And, uh, you know, when it first started, I, in my head, I said to myself, you're just going to talk in thin air for fucking an hour. And uh, my two very good friends, uh, uh, Lucy Wack, a.k.a. Dusty Balls, and Shea Coulee, uh -huh. We're like, ew, we want to watch you fucking talk for an hour and see how that goes. And like two seconds before I started recording, I said, I said, Lucy, Shay, you guys are also in the show. And so the Tony Soto show kind of formed that way with me and Lucy and Shay uh, for many years. And then, you know, we brought on uh, Rachel, who was on for many years. And now since they've all left and now it's just myself and uh, my co-host Maxwell. Esposito. So the sh in six years, the show has seen 
a lot of evolution, but it is still a weekly podcast. <laughs> Y'all definitely need to check it out. And you also have another podcast that's weekly, The Gay Power Half Hour. You just want to talk. Basically, basically, I talk entirely too much <laughs> on the internet. That is basically what we're going to get through to today. Um, so yes, uh, I always tell people that I'm very well-rounded because I'm very good at a lot of things. And, th and this is the thing about, you know, I love hearing uh, Poe talk and uh, her humility is so amazing and her like, you know, community. And, and you know, I'm like, I moved to LA because it was full of selfish people. <laughs> I was like, I could be amongst like-minded folks. <laughs> a balance, ladies and gentle thems, a balance here on the Tito Bonito show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, I got really high and I think I lost my train of thought. But no, we were talking about gay power half hour. Oh, so yeah. So I always say that like the Tony Soto show is for fun. Like we have drag queens on it, actors, comedians, you know, we interview people. It's not very serious. Um, the Gay Power Half Hour I do with my comedy partner, Casey Lai, and that's political, pop culture. Like, it's more of a thinker. It's more of like, um, you know, I just... Shorter. You see what a screaming leftist I am, really, I guess. Uh, Bapo, I kind of want to play a fucked up game with you right now. Okay. This is uh, hopefully going to go wrong. Ooh, Okay. I've played it before, but I'm definitely switching it up because I love you, of course. It's called Fuck, Mary Kill. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know this. And we all know this game. I am tossing some of your favorite shows, and we're just going to see what happens, okay? Okay. So first off, we have three cast members of the hit TV show Law & Order SVU. Dong dong. Is it going to be Olivia Benson, Elliot Stabler, or John Munch? Who you oh, fucking killing and marrying? Fuck, marry, kill. So I'm gonna kill fucking uh, Stabler because he is unstable. All right, he put Benson in a lot of issues for many. T He's unstable. Like that's why he left. That's why he ended up leaving. So we're gonna just go and kill him. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck Benson because I feel like. Listen, she's got a lot of trauma, so it's probably. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, you marry Munch because, A, you don't know how much money he's truly sitting on. And he's old and could go at any moment. But also, he's just probably good to talk with at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Dong, dong. I love that shot. I literally wanted to hear you say all of that because I fucking love this show and I wanted to hear what you think of the show based off of how you would do this. Um, oh, that was fucking good. All right, we got next up the cast three fine ass dudes from 30 Rock. We have Jack Donaghy, Kenneth Parcel, and Frank Rossitana. Uh-huh. Okay. So you would obviously uh, marry Alec because he's financially stable, you know what I mean? And he's distant. So that means you could probably have affairs and you're going to be in the clear. Facts. Um, you're going to fuck Ken, Kenneth, because Kenneth is from a weird, weird place. And he's just probably got just the large, and I'm not a size queen by any means, but I'm interested to see what a huge penis looks like on a human body. I assume he has one. Um, I'm gonna kill, uh, I'm gonna kill him. He fucking sucks, all right? He's, <laughs> I don't need anyone who's that attached to his mother, all right? I don't need that. Amen. I, I don't need anyone looking over my shoulder making me feel guilty for not calling mine, okay? <laughs> I, this is now turning into a dating show. Uh, we have some of the cast of Community. We got Donald Glover. We got Danny Pudi and Mr. Ben Chang. That's his character name. So can I just fuck and marry the top two? Um, Together? We'll live in a wonderful, throuple relationship. I, um, Abed and, uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting his name on the show. Which Alvin one? And Blake and the, Troy, Alvin oh, yeah. and Troy have the 
best TV relationship uh, ever written. Uh, I love them. They're both fucking sexy as hell. And I would like to fucking marry them both. And I would be, uh, I would be loyal. I wouldn't cheat on either of them. They could, I mean, and then we could just kill the bottom one. Chang sucked. He was so annoying. He was so mean. He, they just, you know, they, he wore them down to be, and they were finally like, fine, we'll be your friend. But he was still psycho all the way to the end. This one is going to be, let's go. We have the cast of Dragula winners, Vander Von Odd, Bitch Puddin. Dragula winners? Why are, we doing, why are we doing the boo shows? I want to see what you have to do. famous queens, right? Listen, no, we got to make it fun. And I need some drag kings up in here. I kid. I kid the Dracula <laughs> girls. I know that they're all famous. I fuck all of them. Every single one of them. Can I just, can I just, can they just all come on me? <laughs> That's your answer, fine, fine, final answer? I mean, I, I, I love I like it. each one of these winners. Here's the thing about, I'll say, here's the one good thing I'll say about the Boo Who's franchise, Greg. Each winner has deserved it. Agreed. There's not, you know, because like you look back at like, let's say what season, nine where of drag race where there was like an amazing drag queen who absolutely won the competition and then some other drag queen uh white one uh dropped flower petals out her wig and then won out of nowhere so i mean like who needs that garbage at least on dragula i mean of course the hosts are fucking asinine and listen nice. we love that you you said something positive does it hurt Is but, it, are you feeling okay but at least I can watch each season and be like, ah, the right girl won. Oh, I love you. I want to do one more, but it gives me two more minutes. So do you want to just hop back on this? Oh, are we in the countdown? Yeah, it started giving me the countdown right now. Oh, I love that. I can be Let's... really fast. Okay, here we go. The original cast of the Tony Soto Show, Shea kool Dusty Balls, and uh, Rachel Sanders, you can absolutely I'm going to kill Rachel because she's always so mean to me. I'm going to marry Wack because she just knows so much about me, and that would be great. And I guess I'd fuck Shay just because that's the next thing to do. But uh, it'd be weird. I'd definitely be like... <laughs> oh, my God. I love you so much. Everyone give some love to Tony Soto. Venmo Cash app. Follow him on the Tony Soto Show. He is literally everywhere on the internet. And you definitely want to make sure to catch Learn the Words Bitch every month, as well as his weekly podcast. I'm going to be on the Tony Soto Show next week. See, there was plenty of time. So I love you so much for joining. You are literally the shit. And come back anytime you want. We can do more fucked up shit. Yeah, this was fun. I enjoyed it. I love you so much, babe. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. I love that it's kind of like awkward to be like, okay, like you're ending the call, like an actual phone call, but uh, I'm turning on the comments for literally 20 seconds. Thank you so much for watching the Tito Bonito show. I have been your host, The Cuban Missile Crisis. Check me out on OnlyFans. It's only $5 a month. Also, I will be uh, performing with the Dollface Dames this Sunday for a brunch show. Y'all want to make sure to check that out. Follow them at the Dollface Dames on Instagram. And shout out to Jeez Louise who put the Babysitter's Club on hold just to speak with us. Sorry we ran out of time and couldn't speak to you. Uh, we love all of you. Make sure you tell all your friends about the show and catch us next week and every Friday right here on Instagram, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Love y'all. Make good choices. Bye.